today is you guys come on, say hello, tell me where you're from. My name is Chelsea Evans. I am the artist and owner of Apple Blossom Way, and I live on Apple Blossom Way. So we're just all, we're like the Apple Blossom crew here. <laughs> anyway, today I wanted to uh, show you something a little bit different, something that hopefully will be helpful for all of you as well. And we are going to pour some molds. Who here, if you have used molds before, uh, from Redesign with Prima, like raise a hand, or um, maybe tell me your favorite one you've used in the comments. That way I know that comments are coming through, that I can see your comments, and maybe somebody will want to know what mold you guys like so they can look at them too. Uh, I, per I placed two links in the description. One is for a retailer near you, and the other one is for my affiliate link. So if you don't have a retailer, uh, you can use that link as well. Okay. Uh, first, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you, actually, I'm going to show you how I set everything up. I purposely didn't get ready because I wanted to show you guys, thought it would be helpful. Uh, and these are just something that I've learned over time. So this is my table. Um, as I'm sure many of you work at your table for small projects, maybe you have a shop. But I do use my table quite a bit, and I don't want the epoxy to leak through and ruin my tabletop. So here's how I'm going to prep it. There's a few different ways. I'm purposely using home items because I thought that would be more helpful to you than professional items, maybe. Easier to grab. Uh, you're going to need some garbage bags. Or if you have a sheet of plastic, um, tarp, anything that's like water resistant, that's not going to leak through, then you're going to lay that down first. Hi, Lori. How's it going? Hi, Andrea. Okay, so I'm just going to lay these down first. Now, what this is going to do is... If I put a canvas or a drop cloth, um, I'm gonna use an old sheet that I use for painting on top, the epoxy won't leak through and ruin my table. Uh, because if you don't place this and you drip epoxy over, which happens a lot, I guarantee it's going to stick to your table and it's really difficult to get it off. Sometimes it will ruin the finish depending on what you have um, as your finish currently. So just keep that in mind. So layer plastic down and then I just have a sheet an old sheet that I use for painting. When my sheets start to get old, I turn them into painting drop cloths. And then I'm just gonna lay that down right over top of, ah, uh, of my garbage bags. That way we have a nice little barrier, so, and a clean area to work on. And the next thing you're gonna need is gloves. Uh, you've got to wear gloves when doing epoxy because it's really hard to get off. So these, I love nitrile gloves. Those are the gloves that I always use. Um, I have issues when I use latex gloves, like my face gets irritated and stuff. It's weird. But these are really nice because they're thicker and stretchier and you can reuse them. I think these are, let's see, there's different millimeter grades of gloves and some are um, thicker than others. Let's see if this says on it. Hmm, it doesn't. Well, let's see, maybe, nope. I don't know where to look anyway. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm wasting time looking because I don't even know where to look. Uh, but there's different millimeter strengths. And um, if you want to reuse them a lot, get a thicker one. If you tend to go through gloves quicker, then you can get a thinner millimeter. I think it comes in like three, five, seven, and nine millimeters, something like that. You can get these on Amazon. If you guys have a Harbor Freight, they sell them. Sometimes they're in different colors. They are much easier to buy now than they were six months ago, a year ago, when COVID hit. Because that was impossible to find gloves. Okay, or they went up in price. Now they're back down to normal pretty much. So, All right, so you've got your gloves. Uh, you want your hair pulled back so you're not going to touch it or you'll get epoxy in your hair. Speaking from experience. And then you need your epoxy. This epoxy was recommended to me by Kristen Min and I love it, it's really awesome. So I'm really glad that I got it. Epoxy comes in two parts, and there's all different types of epoxy. Um, I do epoxy countertops, tabletops, and things like that. You do not wanna use this epoxy for a tabletop or countertop because it's a very quick setting epoxy, which means within, I mean, I'll show you, I'm gonna show you today, but within 15 minutes, you can pop those molds out and use them and apply them, they're really hard. Uh, but a tabletop or countertop epoxy takes you know, several hours to cure, um, sometimes days, and you can work with it. Your work time is much, your open window for work time is much greater than if you use this quick setting epoxy. Uh, the brand of this 
is specialty resin and chemical and it's just specialtyresin.com um i got it on amazon because they had a, it was like a good deal for the two sizes i know a lot of artists will put a top like a pump top on these and then they'll pump what they need from their epoxy and use it that way um but i just went ahead and put these in to my little fifo bottles so it has the two parts and you can tell for those of you that have done resin or epoxy pours you can see how like watery that is see how watery that is the longer the set time or cure time is the more thick they'll be they'll be more, more like gel consistency and these are really fast setting so they're liquidy okay so i have these to make it easy to mix but i forgot my bowl you guys hold on <laughs> i have these little oh there we go I have these little containers I got, and I think, oh, I'm so dumb. I'm like, I'm going to teach you how to make epoxy and not have anything I need. All right, so I got these from the dollar store. For molds like this, these are really great. So they're just little tiny containers with the lids. Um, I like to, because I think there's like eight for a dollar, and so I don't have to keep them or save them like, if I don't want to. And then what I'll do is I have, I need three containers. For these, it's okay for three. If you're doing countertops, you're gonna need more. But. Okay, so three containers, just little ones, because we're pouring little molds. I'm gonna use an old butter knife for my stir stick. You can use the, like the wooden stir sticks you get in um, the Prima transfers or anything like that. Epoxy gets hot, so just keep that in mind when, as it cures. And I pulled out a couple of molds to show you. One is called Cogs and Wings, and the other one's Mechanica Molds, because I'm gonna do something really cool with these, and I'm really excited. And uh, if you guys don't follow me on my page, Apple Blossom Way, you should, and then you can see what I'm gonna do with these after we make them today, because they're gonna be cool. Okay, so this one is the Cogs and Molds, or wait, Cogs and Wings Molds. Isn't that awesome? These are beautiful wings. So many cool things you could do with this. And I love how this is like the inside of a clock, like the clock cogs and I don't know, it's really cool. So I've got that one. Kind of um, like maybe you could do a cool steampunk look with this. Industrial looks are great for these molds. You guys have used these, give me a thumbs up or tell me if you've used them before. I had a friend who makes cakes and occasionally I'll throw some molds at her because she does the coolest cakes. And because these are food safe, and she used this one and made the coolest cake I've ever seen with it. I'll have to share it with you guys, it's really rad. All right, so this one's the Mechanica Mold. And you can see it's got those cogs on it. I love it has these old turnkeys in it, which is really cool. So it's got some fun, some fun pieces in those molds. All right, so we got those two. And we've got our little things. And and I'm gonna pour these and I'm gonna show you something else I made while these are drying. So when you do a two-part epoxy, it's a 50-50 mixture. So you want them to be exactly even so that they will harden. If you, don't, if you mix it too much harder or too much of the resin, it's not gonna fully cure and you'll have issues. So mix it evenly. So I'm just gonna take right out of my FIFO bottle and I am going to just pour it in I don't want it to splash, so I'm trying not to squeeze too hard. Okay, so I'm gonna put it about that much. And then if you, you can use a measurement, like a cup or something to measure these out exactly. But I am going to stick them right side by side. I'm gonna get down, get a little bit more here. There we go. I just like those five full bottles, it makes it easier. Instead of pouring these big giant, uh, the half gallons in these tiny little jars, it makes it easier just to have those. Or if you have the little pumps, those would be awesome because then you could say, okay, three full pumps of this one, three full pumps of this one, and then we're even. All right, so I've got my two there. So now I'm gonna take them into my empty container and I'm going to mix them together. So let me check this again. I think we got too much of the, white once it settles. Let me add just a little bit more of this. 
Now for molds, I'll kind of fudge and I'll eyeball this, right? If I was doing a countertop, I would do it exact because that's a big deal. Molds are, you know, you can always remake them if you want. These are FIFO bottles. You can get them on uh, Amazon, F-I-F-O. They're really, I put my paint in them and everything. They're really cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour in the one. Oh, and I'm gonna pour some out because I can tell that's too much. Okay. And then I'm going to pour in the other. And that is about the same amount. Okay, I'm gonna take my fancy stir stick and I'm just gonna mix this now this epoxy does turn white, and I didn't know that until I used it. And so I got my alcohol inks all ready and I did this cool design and I put an old necklace in one of them and I thought it was gonna look so awesome. And then it turned white and my necklace disappeared. <laughs> I was, that was really sad. So keep in mind, it turns white, which is great for painting, etc. All right, so I'm just gonna stir it and make sure it's fully you know, stir it together really well. This is a quick setting epoxy, so I don't want to stir for too long, but I think it said like 30 to 60 seconds on there, which is a very short time for epoxy. Okay, so I'm gonna set it here, and we are gonna take our mold, the Mechanica mold. I'm sorry, this is the wings and cogs and wings or something. And then I'm just gonna take my epoxy, and I'm going to pour it right into the mold. Now these will get really hard and so if I over pour on my edges, I don't worry about it because I can wait till it's hard and kind of break off the edges because they'll be really thin. I'll show you. Or um, I, you can sand them. So once the epoxy completely hardens, I can sand it with sandpaper and kind of sand it down. Now I can, when I'm going to paint over them, I will sand them down because I want them uh, to, ooh, see that one went over, but that's okay. I want them to have a little bit of grip. So epoxy, the natural finish for epoxy is a very high sheen, okay? Um, and how well does paint stick to something that's super shiny, right? Not super well, okay? So I take my fine sandpaper after I pour it, or after they're completely dry, and then I um, make them more of a matte finish. That way my paint's gonna stick. So I'm just gonna take my fancy butter knife, and this is a good time if you have something to catch, like a plate or something, instead of just pouring right onto your surface, although we're protected. And I'm just gonna take it, this is why like a spatula or something like that's really great. And I'm just gonna run my knife right over the top of it and just swipe it right onto that. Now, don't touch epoxy on anything that you don't want epoxy to be on, okay? Don't take this and think you're gonna go rinse it out in the sink because you're not. You're either gonna leave it, let it harden and sand it off and reuse your tool. This is now a tool. It has been, it's bent and broken. Or, okay, that's all I'm gonna mess with it. Or I'm gonna throw it away, okay? so. This needs to set. You can see a little bit, and if you can't see, just swipe your comments to the right, and um, then you'll be able to see better. But I'm just gonna set this aside. Actually, I'm gonna hold it up a little bit. Okay, so see how it's starting to turn white? Ooh, and it's hot. It's warm to the touch, too. Epoxy gets warm, so be ready for that, okay? So you can see that's starting to set. It sets very rapidly, okay? So I'm just gonna set that aside, let it do its thing for a minute. And while that is setting, should we pour one more? Let's see. Um, yes, the resin is, I'll put it in the description, but it's specialty resin. It's a quick setting epoxy resin uh, that dries within, you can use it within 15 minutes. It's really cool. Uh, I've done resin molds with like a countertop epoxy before and I've waited all night for them. And then even still they're not, sometimes they're not fully cured. And so I, I love this because it's rapid. It's, I mean, who's got time to like wait overnight for things to cure, right? And you can see, see how it turns white and it will change states, okay? So right now it's, I can still kind of push on it. It's 
still bendable. And then once it hardens all the way, it'll be rock hard where I can chip it right off of that plastic and it will come up in a hard piece. Okay, let's do this one while we have some of our epoxy still out. And then I'm gonna show you some of these other ones I made and like some of the kind of fun things that you can do with these. So because I've kept these two containers separate and I have, um, I haven't mixed them or anything, I can put more product into those. So I'm just gonna do that and make sure you use the, put the right one in the right one. It's pretty easy to do because they're different colors. Uh, some epoxies are really similar colors though, so keep that in mind. Okay. Got about even content for those. And then, oh, oh, I just, speak. this is why you guys want plastic bags underneath, because this is what happens. You spill it when you try and pour this off. And now I know my table's gonna be okay because I have those plastic bags underneath, okay? If I didn't, this would definitely leak through and then this would be stuck to my table. I would have to pull it off and it would leave uh, like white epoxy marks. It'd be really crummy. Let me just pour a little bit more so we don't do that again. Okay. And I could use the same container I always already used to mix in. But what I'll do is I'll set this aside and I'll let this fully cure and then I'll be able to like kind of go like this and it will pop out the epoxy that's sitting there and then I can keep using it later on. So we'll just grab another one and mix up another batch. Okay, use my stir stick. I usually don't do this in clothes either. I mean, sorry, <laughs> I don't do it naked. <laughs> I wear clothes. <laughs> I usually wear like my painting clothes or an apron or something, uh, but I told myself I was gonna be super careful so I could just do this live without. I don't think that's ever a good idea. So there's what not to do with Chelsea. But please wear clothes and wear gloves. Because it can burn. Epoxy can kind of burn if you get it on you. So it's better, it's better just to protect yourself and not. If you're going to sand these after, you want to use a fine grit sandpaper like 220 or 320 grit. And you want to wear a mask. Definitely wear a mask. I typically will do it outside too. Just to protect myself and my lungs. Okay. So this is setting up pretty nicely. You can see there's a little bit of a dip like at the end of the wings. Can you see that? So what I can do is I can pour a little bit more of this epoxy in there if I want to, although it still has the shape. So I'll just let it sit. Um, I can pour that right over the top. So let's say you underfilled it and you need to add more. You can go ahead and pour it just right over the top. And then we'll do, this one is the Mechanica. Yeah, Mechanica molds. Super cool. Okay. Let's pour some of these. And I'm gonna leave a little bit left over because I, I do wanna show you something cool. Even though it's white, it's still kinda cool. I mean, even though the epoxy sets up white is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I like this one, this one's pretty rad. Oops, oh, goodness. Spill it on my hand, that is warm. Okay, so I'm making a real mess of this, man. Let's say you don't want to make such a big mess, right? What you're going to do, ah, where is it? Oh no, I grabbed it out to show you guys. What the, maybe I, oh, ah, it's right here. Okay, you can get these, they usually come with like Tylenol or um, ibuprofen, little kids, or um, you can get them without the needles, most places. So you're just going to suction that right up into it like this, and then I can take it and I can pipe it right into my molds. And it's gonna be a lot cleaner. And, but I have to work quickly because see, it's already starting to set up. So only pour out what you need. Yeah, because this is like, yeah, this is too, it's too late, but. Oops. Yeah, oopsie. Too late, garbage. This is done for. So you got mixed up a little too much. So just keep that in mind when you're mixing up. Whatever you mix up, you wanna use it right then. 
because it sets up quickly. Okay, well, I'm gonna do the same little trick I did before without trying to ruin everything. This is sticky. Okay, also, what not to do? Oh darn, yeah, it's setting up a little too much. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave this. I'll have to sand it, that's fine. I gotta sand it anyway, okay. See how I waited too long, it's like a sticky mess with texture. That's gonna set up with that texture. It'll self level, but if I mess with it during the hardening process, it's gonna add texture and it's not gonna be perfectly smooth. Like I said, that's okay, because I'm gonna sand that and it's all good. Okay, I am going to take these off. I got a real mess going on here, ladies and gentlemen. Real mess. Okay, we're just gonna fold this into our little short hair. There, now we have a nice, beautiful, clean surface to work on, right? <laughs> to show you these. Okay, while these are setting up, I'm gonna put my gloves on another pair just so I don't, because sometimes I don't think and I accidentally will grab those because I just wanna show you so bad. I'm gonna get the epoxy all over my hands and just so. <sighs> it takes like, if you let it wear off, it takes, several days for it to wear off, you'll have epoxy fingers. Um, you can use things like mineral spirits, lacquer thinner to remove it. Sometimes alcohol, straight up alcohol will remove it. Um, vodka will remove it. Okay. So these, I'll show you these two. See how they're all white? Even our little edges, they're getting pretty close. So I'm just gonna, oh, look at that, what? Okay, let's see how they are. Yeah, they're hardened. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so you see what I'm talking about, these little edges? They're gonna be thin, so I can kind of break them off with my finger. It's easier if you don't have gloves on, but. Once they're dry, you can handle these just fine without gloves on. And you know what? I'm just going to do that because it's kind of annoying. I need my nails. Okay. So I can just break off those little edges. And I don't want to sand it for a while. If I sand it right now, it's like inside it's going to be a little bit hard. Um, and so if I wait, I'm going to have a better result. So you can see that. Now, if I try to apply that just as is to a dresser, it has a little bit of a ridge. Can you guys see that ridge right there? So it's the ridge is going to make it stick up and it's not gonna stick to your piece as much as you want it to, right? And so what that's exactly the part that I'd wanna sand. I'd take my fine sandpaper and you know, I think I got some right here. Let me just, let's see. Uh, I don't know if I got a couple sanding pads just sitting in this drawer, so we'll try that. Okay. So I'm just gonna take, these are great. These are from Surf Prep, they're sanding pads. And um, I can kind of just run it over. I'm not gonna sand very much because I don't wanna breathe this in. I wanna wear my mask and stuff. But I'm just gonna sand it so it sands down that ridge. And then my piece is going to, when I glue it, it's gonna stick right to my furniture and lay flat and it won't have those ridges, okay? And the top, this has a lot of detail in it. So I can go ahead and paint on that or I can take and I can just rough it up just a little and then glue it on and then uh, it's gonna be amazing. Should we pull out the other ones? Let's do it while we're sitting here. Might as well. Well, I'd like to show them to you anyway. Okay, there's one wing. Ooh, these are pretty. I love these. Okay, look, how awesome. Okay, and I, now I'm like really excited to use it on the project I'm gonna do. You guys are gonna love it. It's gonna be so rad. Okay, so you got a pair of wings. These are beautiful. We need these in extra large size. You can work on that frame, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, got our cute little tiny wings. Let's pull out some cogs. Let's see what those look like. Oh, my tummy just growled. Ooh, that is super pretty. Can you guys see that? Oh, I love that. And when you paint this or glaze that, all of those details are just gonna pop out and it's gonna be like killer. You're gonna like it. Okay. 
Yep, see, there's another one. See how my, my edge? I'm just gonna pick it off with my fingers and then I can just sand that down so it's nice and smooth on the back. That's really cool stuff. Oh, see that one's still setting up in the middle. So I'm gonna set that aside. Same thing, pop it off. Boop, boop. We got our wing, okay? Cool, all right. I will keep doing this later, but I'm loving these cogs, they're super rad. All right, but I was gonna show you the other thing that uh, I did the other day. So I made these little, I used alcohol inks, I had molds. I got a jewelry, it's like a jewelry set mold and it has all kinds of little tags on it. Um, you can do keychains on or necklaces and it has long molds so you can make solid pieces like this. So I took my epoxy and then I had some alcohol inks. So alcohol inks, you can get these on um, Amazon. I'm sorry, yeah, Amazon or um, what brand is this? This is Decor Rom. Alcohol inks are pretty cool. So this comes in a large set. I think it was like 20 bucks or something. And then it has a bunch of different colors. So I use kind of the turquoise and I just dropped some droplets in with my epoxy as I poured it. Same thing here. And then it kind of gives you that cool effect. And then I used some of the metallics from Wiseau and I just painted a little bit with my finger to kind of give it that beautiful gold. Now I can drill, the epoxy so hard now, like, ugh, I can drill a tiny hole in this and put um, like a piece on and then I can hang it as a necklace, which would be super pretty. Sorry, I feel like I'm just like way far away and then I feel like my face is so close that all you can see is my nose. Uh, this is another one I really like. You can see the alcohol ink on the bottom with this black piece and see how it's lighter up in here and the top shiny, but the rest is dull and matte. So I sanded this and I kind of got that um, kind of like a, a, a soap stone, soap stone look. That's it. This is another one I love. So this is the one of the ones that I put a little piece of jewelry inside of it and not realizing that it was white epoxy, not clear. And so I poured it and then it covered it up. So when I sanded it, I sanded it back enough so my little piece of turquoise would at least show through. <laughs> so I got a little bit something. And then I just used Wiseau Metallics. This is actually the Modern Arrows stick and style stencil um, that I just put on there and then I painted it. This, I love, love, love these. Okay, so these are the, um, T Rose Garden stick and style stencil with the metallics from Wiseau. So I did the same thing. See how they're like real shiny on the back? I don't know. Yeah, there you go. You can see the shine. Okay, that's how shiny it is on the flat. I just sanded it down and added my metallics. So then the metallics have the shine and then it looks like soapstone from behind. So I can use these as a necklace. Um, I can add them on a purse, like your purse pulls, zipper pulls. Uh, on my kids' backpacks, I can make dog tags. I mean, there's like a million things that you can do. And especially with all the amazing molds that Prima has, you can do some really cool things. This is another one. I'll show you these last two and then uh, we'll let you go. But this was another cute one. It's actually two hearts, like best friends or sisters or whatever. And then you can see some of the black alcohol ink that I dropped in there and then the metallic. And these look so much better in person. They're kind of hard to see on here. Keychains, yes, keychains would be awesome. Okay, and that's just another one. It kind of shows you the alcohol ink, the effect that it has. And I sanded that down so it was matte and not super shiny. So anyway, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them. I will check back. If I don't respond, tag me, um, just at Chelsea Evans or Apple Blossom Way, and then I will see it. Uh, you can feel free to follow me and I drop links in the top so you guys can find them and I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful day and I can't wait to see what you create and I can't wait to show you what I'm going to create. So check it out. It's going to be awesome. I hope. <laughs> see ya.